Welcome back for the third section where we finalize implementing our game control and then our win condition. Or with a reset button and a falling reset in place, what we need to do is add a button that allows us to play our game. So I'm going to make a new copy of our reset button. I'm going to call it play. I'm going to make it obtusely big. And I'm going to move it to around here. And what I need this to do is I need this to go inside my bullet solver and I need it to pulse my force. So that is impulse force, pulse, I need it to pulse. So I'm going to edit the content and I'm going to say bullet solver forward slash impulse force one dot power dot pulse dot pulse. So now I'm going to reset it and I'm going to play my game. So every time I push the pulse button, we do an X negative impulse on our ball. And you can see just like that, we've, we've created the start of a game. The one thing we don't have is when I get over to the other side, nothing happens. So inside my bullet solver, I'm going to make a new static uh, object. I'm going to go back to my geocomp. Home on all, just so I can see it. And I'm going to add a basically a box at the end of my arena. Sop box. I am going to render it and display it. And then I'm going to move it to the end and scale it way up. So what I've got is a box that my ball can now hit. I'm going to move it up slightly. I'm, importantly, I'm going to make it float slightly off the ground. Not a massive amount, but just enough so that the two, the floor and this box don't technically touch. And then I'm going to turn off rendering for this object. I'm going to come up and then I am going to tell it to go inside and get box one. And what we've just done is we've made an invisible collider zone. So all we have are a, a section of dot, uh, an allocation of dots in space that don't do anything. But now if I add the bullet solver chop and connect it to this net node, and in here, I'm going to turn off everything apart from collision info. And on enabling collision info, I'm going to get a warning to saying I need to enable perform contact test on their main comp. So up one level, perform contact test. So now looking at this, we can see we're not colliding. If we go back to our panel, I'm going to reset it and I'm going to play it. Now when I pulse my ball along, our C saw, well, our C will saw. And as soon as my ball reaches the end, I'm going to get a piece of information saying that it's contacting with it. But we can see that even though we can't see our square, our collision box still activates. We do get the message saying that we are successfully colliding, which is good. But what I need to do is I need to make it so that I can get a reading saying that we've collided and still let my ball roll to give the effect of an invisible box. Uh, I'm going to go to my setup instead of being an infinite mass, I'm going to give it a finite mass. I'm going to make its mass infinitesimally small and I'm going to reduce friction altogether as well as turning off my global gravity but I'm going to enable continuous collision detection. So now when I reset and start moving over what we'll see is my box actually is here and as soon as my ball hits it it's falling because it's weighs so little it means that uh, the ball can hit it without any negative effects to its movement, but we can still get that positive collision reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a chop execute and on on to off for the colliding channel. So I've got my colliding channel. If I go in here and delete everything else, I am going to make a container that has a text in the background. So I'm going to say text. 
dot slash text one. Now I'm going to move this. So, oh, I'm on the wrong level. That's fine. So I'm going to bring this up here, paste it, and then move it so that we can see it dead in the center. Something like that. This is going to say, you win. And let's jazz it up a little bit. So we'll set this to be parent dot par dot width and parent dot par dot height. So we have some nice scale. Going to turn on some borders. Let's give it a little bit of background. Point two, maybe point three. Pop a nice ready color. Okay, and I'm going to disable it. So I'm going to call this win. I'm going to go inside my solver and I'm going to on my new chop execute on my collider. I'm going to say uh, operator up one level win dot par dot display is equal to one. And then we are going to look at our reset chop so that is our reset button here and then we're going to say operator win dot par dot display is equal to zero so when I reset it we hide it I can play play my game and as soon as I hit the end oh I made a spell mistake so our execute was never too Colliding, so now if I reset, play my game, you can see we are able to win. It is nothing short of a masterpiece. I also want to add this to my falling chop execute. So this one occurs when the ball falls too far, and it just means that we, we're able, when the game resets, we also hide our win panel. So uh, I know it's not the, the most mind-blowing thing ever, but that's a, a real quick look at the new bullet solver inside Touch Designer and exploring using force, mass, and collision to create game environments or gamified experiences. Some super cool things happening interaction-wise. Can't wait to see what everyone makes. <laughs>